Hi guys, look, this is particular for my PPE5 class, but it's for anyone that really sort of wants a very brief explanation of hyperglycemia and diabetic ketoacidosis. So this is your blood vessels sort of now, okay? If I took some blood from you right now, we would find some glucose in your blood and you'd have a normal range anywhere from four to eight millimoles per litre. All right, so that's around the sort of normal range we should be looking for. Um, what happens though with something like diabetes, okay, you can't have, uh, with the glucose molecule sort of floating around, our body, our cells can't really use the glucose molecule without insulin. So we need insulin that's secreted from the pancreas and the beta cells kind of produce the insulin and inject it into our blood and it breaks it down into pyruvate, which gives us some ATP. If we don't have insulin, we can't have that. And if we don't have insulin, what happens is that all the carbs that you eat stay in your sort of bloodstream. And the thing about glucose, it's a very strongly negatively charged kind of molecule, very much like the protein molecule. And if you have an overabundance of glucose in your bloodstream, what you're going to do is that you're going to have an overabundance and an imbalance of too much negative stuff in your bloodstream. And when that happens, all this stuff that's sort of outside the blood vessels, things like sodium and K, if you notice that there's a plus sign and calcium, they all get unusually attracted to the glucose because it's strongly negative charge now inside your blood, right? So what happens is it enters your bloodstream abnormally. And what's bound to all these, all these molecules here is water. So water enters your bloodstream. So your bloodstream's kind of like, I don't want it. So it sends it to the kidneys and the kidneys are like, I don't want it and filters it really, really badly. Sends it down the urethra into your bladder and your bladder goes, I don't want it. And then you pee a lot, okay? So <clears throat> also your body needs to continue to sort of function. So what it does is it burns the next bioavailable compound, which is fat. And a product of fat metabolism is ketones. And you would have heard of the ketone diet and everything else too. They want to produce ketones because they know they're burning fat. But with something like diabetes, whether it's type one or type two, they're not getting enough insulin, they're not getting the ATP, they're now burning fat. We're gonna have an overabundance of ketones in the bloodstream and ketones are very acidic in nature. Hence the name diabetic ketoacidosis. Let's think about the signs and symptoms for diabetic ketoacidosis. Of course you're going to have a BSL that's very high, all right? You're gonna have a patient that's peeing a lot. So you're gonna have a very high urine output and you're gonna have a patient that's very, very thirsty. So high thirst. If this is left untreated, what happens is that you end up peeing out all your electrolytes and all your fluids, and you're gonna be actually really, really sick. You're gonna be shrinking, you're gonna be short of electrolytes, cardiac disturbance, you know, you're gonna be very acidotic when we actually do your arterial blood gases. And the treatment is, of course, insulin to be given very slowly and very gently over a period of time. So look, I hope you can understand now just some of the signs and symptoms and, and connecting some of the signs and symptoms that you're actually seeing in your case studies with what's actually happening at a cellular level. Thanks a lot, I hope that helped.